What is up all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And join me today as I take an advanced look at the Power Pack Omnibus from Marvel Comics. So, please stay tuned. And here we are with this wonderful Omnibus Power Pack that takes me back to my childhood days. I was so excited when I got to announce it in the advanced solicitations. And some of you guys were like, oh, Power Pack, what the heck is even that about? And then some of you guys are like me. Oh yeah, this takes me back to my childhood. So we're going to talk a little bit about what Power Pack is and then of course this book. But before we get started, I'd like to thank David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of the book. The book is scheduled to come out on March 4th. So here is the front of the book. It's Power Pack Classic. I'm surprised it says Classic on there. Uh, it's pretty interesting that they did that. Because uh, I think there's been two incarnations of the series since then. This is the original 1984 series that lasted, I want to say, like 62 issues or so. But in here, we'll talk about the contents here in a second. Uh, all of this is included in this omnibus. The omnibus retails for $125. Now, now let's take a look under that dust jacket. It looks identical to what's on the dust jacket, with the exception of this wonderful piece of art right there by the great man whose name I'm about to butcher, John Bogdanove. And of course, this right here is Julie Brigman, who co-created the Power Pack with Louis Simonson. Uh, it's that master mold art. Takes me back. Tattletale. All right, let's talk a little bit about this book. Okay, so what is Power Pack about? And uh, I'll briefly talk about that as I flip through the pages here. It was a series of a family named uh, the Powers. And we have Katie, Alex, Julie, and Jack. And all four of them um, are children of Maggie and James Power. And Dr. James Power is a scientist who's made this weapon that the Snark Empire wants. Snark are these like reptile creatures right here that are about to kidnap both mom and dad and leave the children alone. But they are not alone. They are with this humanoid horse white creature named Alfire White Mane or Whitey for short is what the kids end up calling him. So the parents are kidnapped out in outer space. Alfie is dying. Alfire, Whitey, uh, is dying and he gives each kid uh, their own power. So let's see, really quick. Actually, let's look at the cover to the second issue so I can explain what their powers are that they're given. So you have Alex, who's the oldest. I think he's like 12 years old at the time. He becomes G because he has the power of gravity. You have Lightspeed right here, that is Julie. She has this power of flight and Lightspeed. Uh, you have Mass Master, who is Jack, who can control the density of mass or rocks and things like that. And then you have Energizer, not the bunny, but this cute little girl named Julie, who is the heart and soul of the power pack. And together they go and rescue their parents and then come back to Earth. And Really, that's about the gist of their origin story. Oh, one more th important thing. Uh, Whitey had a ship. He's like a sentient ship, and his name is Friday. And that is kind of like, acts like a babysitter for the power pack as they go on different adventures. Each one of the kids is given a costume by the ship, Friday, and it kind of mimics the costume that Alfire was wearing. Uh, and then eventually, uh, we do have another member of the team. I'll flip a little bit more through here. And that other member is this little guy right here named Tattletail. His codename is Tattletail, but that is Franklin Richards, son of Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman. That's right, Franklin Richards, known as Tattletail when he's in the Power Pack group, becomes kind of like the fifth member. Uh, now, what does this contain? And then we'll talk a little bit more about it. So this omnibus contains Power Pack 1 through 36. That is beginning with the origin issue. It's our first appearance with issue 1. That's all the way back in 1984. Uh, it collects Uncanny X-Men. I love this, by the way. 195 and 205. Two issues that have never been collected in oversized format. And two of my favorite issues, especially 205, which is the Barry Windsor Smith uh, drawing and colors. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, collects Thor 362, X-Factor Annual number 2. Uh, the graphic novel with Cloak and Dagger, it's like a Cloak and Dagger power pack, Shelter from the Storm, and then some material from Strange Tales 13 and 14. 
all of this, most actually 95% of this book is written by this lovely lady right here, Louise Simonson. Uh, towards the very beginning, the co-creator is June Brigman. Uh, she went on to do, actually, I remember her name mostly from like fill-in arts on New Mutants. She did some classic X-Men stuff. She did some issues of X-Factor. Um, and then she's done some comic strips too. And I want to say, what was it? The last thing, oh, Dragonfly and Dragonfly Man is the last thing I saw her name in. And it's always a pleasure to see her name. Uh, but then Louis Simonson is later on joined by John Bogdanove. And you have Terry Shoemaker, uh, Bob McLeod, Scott Williams on inks, Bob Wysick on inks, uh, Brett Anderson, Brent Anderson also has some of the artwork. And a lot of these earlier stories are so unique for comic books. Now, i give you a quick gist of what Power Pack was, who they are, kind of like their origin story, and really that doesn't know justice. Um, why I enjoyed this as a kid was because during this time I was getting X-Men comics, and then I would, in within the X-Men and then eventually New Mutants and X-Factor continuity, I would see the mention of the Power Pack, and I'm like, who the heck are these kids that are running around in the sewers or having adventures with Wolverine? So then I started, particularly this issue right here, this is issue 195 that I was talking about, never been collected in oversized format. This is the story by Chris Claremont, uh, artwork by John Romita Jr. and Dan Green. Now, yeah, I was wondering why these kids were running around, so I started collecting some of their comic books, and I fell in love with it because... What I thought was going to be another like family that has superpowers, kind of like the Fantastic Four, but it's really not. It's more about the kids. And I know what I've shown here are things that are happening like with the crossover with the Mutant Massacre and things like that. But really it's about down to earth problems like child abuse. They deal with like uh, pollution or drug related stuff. Um, actually the cloak and dagger, I remember cloak and dagger this here, I'll show you in the back. So this particular graphic novel right here, it's written by Bill Mantlo and uh, drawn by Sal Viuto, Mark Farmer lending his inks. But this one's about like runaways and homelessness. So it hit really close to a lot of the issues we were dealing with, but all from like a kid's, the kid's perspective. And I think, I wanna say like in the back of this one, they actually had like some pictures of runaways, if I'm not mistaken, and a hotline you could call. I mean, the the, the issues of like uh, kid, like child trafficking, like uh, human trafficking, things like that. Like a lot of things that you see nowadays that we're dealing with, but all from the kid's perspective or child abuse, like the aliens, uh, whipping them up oh man it's it was so interesting to read this stuff and louise simonson was she was an editor at the time and then uh she was asked to write this series and i'm so glad she did but anyway that's what it meant to me as a kid um and then of course the crossovers that's that's what i was talking about like this issue right here this is my first issue of power pack i bought because we knew of the mutant massacre uh, that was a crossover event through X Factor, New Mutants, and of course Uncanny X Men. And we knew that Wolverine was eventually going to fight Sabretooth in the big showdown of 212, right? Uncanny X Men 212. Um, what we didn't know, or I didn't know because I couldn't find this. I remember at the. Uh, where, where, where was I getting my. I wasn't. My comic book shop was closed at the time, so I had to get uh, my, un my Mutant Massacre issues at like. The grocery store? Was it Hills or something? Anyway, doesn't matter. Sorry, I go on way too long. My point was, like, the time that Wolverine and Sabretooth share a cover happened in this issue of Power Pack. And I was like, what? I missed that issue. So I had to go and find it in a back issue eventually and then got to read it. But that was my, you know, taste of Power Pack at first. And then I got a bunch of back issues, uh, fairly cheap, because I remember getting them for like 50 cents or something each. And this brings back a lot of memories. Now, lately, they've been showing up in Jonathan Hickman's run of the Future Foundation. So, and then, of course, some of these characters eventually, like, showed up in New Warriors. One of the cool things that I haven't even talked about that happens throughout these issues is that the kids eventually, like, switch powers. Uh, and not only do they switch powers, but they also, like, switch code names. Like, G, I think, becomes, like, G-Force and things like that. Um... I've always liked Mass Master. That's such a cool and kick-ass kind of name for a little kid to have. 
But yeah, this is the crossover with the Mutant Massacre. Like, Sabretooth is slaughtering Morlocks down there. And then you have, you know, like, one of the most beloved characters, which I won't show right there, uh, <laughs> dies. Uh, like, she was a supporting cast member of the Power Pack for a couple of issues. And then she gets, like, her throat slashed by Sabretooth. So, you know, it was a pretty interesting way to get people to read uh, Power Pack. Can we just take a minute to appreciate this wonderful issue right here? The Body Shop issue. Oh my god, this, to have this in an omnibus format, I know I'm crazy, but man, this is so awesome. I can't believe it came in a power pack omnibus and not like an X-Man omnibus, right? Or Best of Wolverine omnibus. This is one of my all-time favorite issues. Chris Claremont, Barry Windsor Smith, man, and th this cover alone just, uh Anyway, I'm not going to flip too much through that because this is a power pack omnibus. Sadly, like I said, uh, Louisa, actually, Louise Simonson didn't even get to finish the her comics. I think somebody else ended up um, finishing it. 62 was the final issue. Look at this early John Bogdanove artwork. Now, he's the gentleman that drew, of course, uh, Superman, the death of Superman, like during those issues when he was drawing Man of Steel. Uh, but the inks, of course, help a lot by the legendary Terry Austin. Let's look at the back for extras here. Okay, here are the extras. By the way, the book is coming out on March 4th and has 1,160 pages. So you have the creators. These are the behind the scenes of the creators. There's June Brigman. Uh, there is Louise Simonson, Wheezy. Don't call her Wheezy. And Bob Wysig. And here are some ads. And flipping through these ads, I'm reminded of the, well, it was like a special issue of Spider-Man and Power Pack about, like, um, uh, yeah, abusing kids. And it's not collected in here, but I remember that, like, popping up everywhere. And I want to say, I think that is in continuity because they brought uh, back some stuff. Here's some artwork from the official handbook to the Marvel Universe which I've done an overview of that, and even though I don't own it, do yourself a favor and check that out. Man, that looks so epic. That picture right there always freaked me out. I don't know why it freaked me out as a kid. Because this was a... Where did I think it was a poster or something I would see. That, come, that is epic. Uh, here are some original artwork pages. Love that cover. That is the Brent Anderson cover. That's the origin album. There were three classics, I want to say. And a fourth one was solicited, but it never came out. Yeah, unused power pack classic. Okay. So that's what I thought. Like a fourth one solicited in 2013 and it never came out. So this is a good way to get it all in one. Here are issues of X-Men classics featuring them, the covers. And there's that X-Men 205 I was talking about but it's also in the Life Death hardcover. Now let's look at the binding of the book. You could probably tell by now as I was flipping through those pages that it is sewn binding and it laid over really nice. As we're looking at the beginning and towards the end pages and there's really no gutter loss at all. And when the book comes out on March 4th, you can buy it from cheapgraphicnovels.com. Your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. Cheap Graphic Novels Black Friday sale is continuing all through December, so there's still time to save up to 95% off thousands of books. Additional books will be added throughout the month, so be sure to check back often and stay tuned to CGN on social media to be the first to know when the new books have been added to the sale. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, that was the contents of the book, the build of the book, and what kind of my thoughts are and where this took me back. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, the notifications button to let you know when our videos are going live. We can also be found on Patreon, and all of that information is in the description down below. And thank you to our existing patrons. And our logo can be found on Redbubble if you want t-shirts or stickers or whatever it is to support the channel that way, if you can. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you for watching. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.